When Chris Hernandez and his wife Maria bought their home in the suburbs of Miami, Florida, they thought they had found the perfect place to raise a family. But they began to have doubts when some strange and inexplicable things started happening on the afternoon of July 5th, 1992. Should be fun. It was pretty scary for me being pregnant and all. I mean, when my daughter gets older, I can show her the pictures to say, look, a month before you were born, all this happened, and you were oblivious to all of it because you were inside my tummy. Maria and Chris were on their way to a friend's birthday party that afternoon. The steering column's jammed. Well, what do you mean it's jammed? It won't let me turn. I could not move it. And also, my alternator light came on. So, because we were in a bit of a hurry and it was already getting a little late, we had to park the car back in the driveway and take the other car. About 7 o'clock that evening, we got back home. My husband popped open the hood and he started to poke around to see what was wrong with the car. I noticed on the right side of the engine what appeared to be a tail. And I thought, oh my God, I got a snake in my car. What do you mean a snake? Get the book, watch. What do you I'll mean? Try. And I said, we'll take it out. All I wanted to do was rent a movie tonight, get rid of it. Where? Right there. Right oh there. my God. Let me see if it's alive. Be careful. Got it what do we do? I wasn't as mobile as I usually am. And I didn't know if the fear of this thing would make me uh, go into premature labor. What do you see? There's a big tail down here, Marty. I can't make anything else out. Holy cow, get away from the car. There's a claw there. This is an alligator or a crocodile. Get this thing out of here now. Now, right now. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report uh, an emergency, sort of. We call Metro Day non-emergency number. They said, somebody's playing a practical joke on you. Maybe it's an inflatable alligator. Why don't you try poking it? Maybe it'll pop. Okay, give me the number. Who are you going to call? She gave me a couple of phone numbers to some wildlife, game, rescue, etc. But it was Sunday, okay. and no one answered. In desperation, Chris called his best friend, Tim Lanham, a 911 supervisor. Hey, Tim. Hey, hey, Chris. Thanks for coming out, man. Come on. Look at that. You see it? Knowing Chris... I'm thinking, you know, like, I wonder what it is, really. Probably a, a lizard, maybe a foot or two long, and uh, he's freaking out. Whoa. You see it? Look at that. See that? That's kind of big. Look at that claw down there. I think we have a little problem here, guys. As soon as he realized the scale of the problem, Tim called the Florida Game and Freshwater Fish Commission. Officer John Esslinger was sent to the scene. John Esslinger, Florida Game and Fish Commission. Thanks for Thanks coming, coming out. Check it out. Look it looks that. like a gator or See something, right doesn't it? No, it's no gator. You sure? I'm what do you sure. Think? What do you think it is? I believe it's a big lizard. Is it alive? Yeah. yeah it looks Just by the size of the animal, I could tell that it probably had potential to be dangerous. You're going to take it with you, right? So um, once I figured out where the head was, I just stayed away from the head. Holy mackerel, he's a big boy. Yeah. He's about four or six feet long. You think so? Oh, he's up. Oh, he's frisky, all right. He's moving around up there. Chris, how do you feel about taking apart your car? There was a fear that that he wasn't trapped, that he was there by his own will. Oh, okay, that's wrong. Yep. He's been eating his Wheaties. I didn't know if it was angry or what. He's, he's holding on tight. Yeah, he's grabbing on again. He's. Oh. What's the car, Tim? Yeah, he's expanding on us. He doesn't want to come out either way. This thing could have picked a roomier car, a nicer car, but he had to pick my car. Looks like he's found himself a new home. Chris and I said, you're not going anywhere until you find somebody that can get rid of this lizard for us. Pesky critters. Todd Hardwick runs a company that specializes in nuisance wildlife control. In an engine? We had a feeling that it would be a monitor lizard, which makes me a little uneasy because monitors can be capable of inflicting an extremely nasty bite. How you doing, hey, John? Todd. Hey, Todd. Appreciate you coming. Hey. There you go. Wow, look at that. Wow, oh, he's big. He's something else. <laughs> it's an Asian water monitor, every bit of six feet. 
I was thinking that possibly when the engine started, the fan belts, which were now dislodged, had propelled him up into this position. And there was no way in the world that he was going to come out of this compartment alive. Watch that tail when you're down there with your eyes. <laughs> Todd's associate, Jill Voigt, was hoping for a better outcome. All I wanted to do is save this lizard and bring it home with me. That's what I wanted. I wanted the lizard. I'm going to need you all to move back for me a few feet no in case something no goes wrong here. I got his back legs and I'm pulling, but uh, he's really stuck. Yeah, I think that we're going to have to go with plan B, Jill. I didn't really want to be near it, and yet I, w I didn't want to miss the show either. My neighbors came out, they brought their beach chairs, and they said if we wanted some beer, they would bring out the, the cooler with the beers and everything. Thanks a lot. Okay. Here comes the soap, Jill. Well, at least he's going to be a clean lizard. Watch yeah, the head. yeah, okay. I got his two back feet now. Okay. He's, he's really wound up okay, in there. Okay, I want to see him react, Jill. Give him a little bit of uh, steady pulling. pressure. I'm pulling. I am pulling. He's okay. stuck. Okay, hold up, Jill. This isn't going to work like this. So basically, after 20 minutes, we had a slimy trap lizard. To them, it was like a challenge. It was like, okay, dishwashing liquid doesn't work. We're going to get this sucker one way or another. He should start to react to the cold, and hopefully he'll slide right down into your lap. Be ready. My father had told me, well, just kill it. Cut it up, and in five minutes, I'll wash it out, and it'll be gone, and I'll have my car back. But I really felt bad for the animal. He's hissing pretty good. Well, he's not backing up. Everybody thought it was time to throw in the towel. And we don't do that. We get them out alive. I would have stayed there all night long trying to get the lizard out unharmed and alive. If I had to hire a mechanic to come and take the car apart and help me, I would do that. Around 10.30 p.m., Todd called a veterinarian who recommended a tranquilizer to relax the lizard. Oh, he doesn't like that. No. <laughs> oh, there is considerable risk there. The animal could stop breathing, the heart could stop, and in a situation like he was, we would not be able to do much for him. He looks pretty tranquilized now. Okay. He all of a sudden relaxed, and his arms and claws and legs were not hugging the engine anymore, but he was wedged in there by this bar. If you can just get that loose, we're going to have a lizard out of here. You can have it. I don't want it. Everybody looked around, and everybody wound up looking at me. They're my tools. I guess I'm going to have to go over there and do it. Watch that tail, okay? Oh, believe me, I am. Jill, be ready to get under here. Don't hesitate. She's right here. Don't let the engine fall on you now. He rolled out from under that car faster than I've ever seen anybody move. And Jill was moving faster to get under the car. It's coming out of there, Jill. Be careful. There you go. Lizard sliding down. Okay, I got the head. I got the Watch head. Watch the mouth. He's coming. I'm pulling. Lizard's coming out. He's coming out. Oh, I got him. We have a lizard. We got him. I got him. It looked like her long-lost pet puppy or something. Look at him. It was like, at last, I've got my hands on you. What do you think, Todd? Oh, six feet? man, he yeah. looks okay. Does he look hurt? Pounds. He look hurt? He looks hurt? He looks all right. He's got a little blister on the chest still. here, but he looks he's pretty good. He's still tranquilized. Look, just like a little that dinosaur. Big, big <laughs> all I could think of was, he's a lucky guy, because I could have driven away further and, and really hurt him. We didn't bring a big enough cage to put this lizard in. And I said, well, Todd, since he's tranquilized, let's just take him in the cab with us. He can sit on my lap. And the lizard rode home in my lap, all the way with Todd looking at him like this. Lizard's not waking up, is he? Lizard's not waking up. See you later. The Asian water monitor, presumed to be an escaped pet, was treated for minor burns and a lacerated tongue. When no former owner showed up to claim him, Todd and Jill were able to give him a good home. Here, he's a... Uh... Well, I'm a lot happier now than Honey, when he was in that engine. He's even got his own. We get a phone call from Gecko Films. They want this lizard to be their mascot. Says so this lizard deserves to live the life of luxury. Dubbed Gordon Gecko, he's now under contract to the film company. He's living presently in a big cage, complete with a waterfall, his own bathing pond, luxurious plants in a food budget that surpasses mine. He spends his days 
laying up on those rocks, getting a suntan, and then he spends the evenings in his little jacuzzi here, so he lives better than any lizard in town lives. The past year or so, we're seeing an increase in conflicts with exotic animals and people, and it may be that we're starting to build into areas where these exotic animals have been living for years, unapproached and unmolested. We've had people say, I'm afraid to check my oil now. I don't want to pop the hood on my car. What if I find one of those things? I think he knows who I am. He tried to steal my car. That's right. <laughs> I like Gordon, and I'm glad he's fine. And it was fun and adventuresome at the same time, but I don't ever want it to happen again. <laughs> Not my car, anyway. Next, 